welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today's video is the first part of my first ever international travel vlog. So we went to Singapore last May 11 to 16, mainly for Born Pink SG. But of course, since nasa SG na rin naman kami, nagbook na rin kami ng activities for the rest of the days na nasa Singapore kami. So I decided to divide itong SG vlog na to into four parts, including yung Born Pink experience. So sa mga susunod na weeks pa, um, makikita niyo yung ibang activities and yung Born Pink. So for this video, for the first part, I will share with you the things I needed to do before boarding the SG, our SEA Aquarium, Universal Studios, and the Van Gogh Exhibit experience. And of course, before we go to SG, let's talk about the requirements and my first ever immigration experience here in the Philippines. So for the requirements and ano ba yung una kong ginawa, ano ba yung unang kinailangan ko, um, umpisahan natin with the flight ticket pa SG. Kasi kailangan siyang ipakita sa guard pagpasok mo ng airport. So yun yung una nilang hahanapin sa'yo. Then you have to check in your baggage. Yung need mo lang dito are your passport, your flight details, and your check-in baggage, of course. So after mong mag-check-in, after that, diretso ka na sa immigration. Then you have to make sure na nakapag-fill up ka na ng e-travel bago ka pumila sa immigration kasi medyo maraming tao. So mas okay na meron ka na nito before going to the airport kasi medyo maraming tao sa immigration and para less hassle na din kasi mas hassle or mas magtatagal ka kapag doon ka pa mag-fill up. And nung turn ko na sa immigration, binigay ko lang sa IO yung passport and yung boarding pass ko. Then, he asked me for my return ticket. So, pinakita ko lang naman siya. And actually, ang smooth kasi walang gaanong hiningi na requirements or wala rin gaanong questions sa akin. Only questions were sinong kasama ko and anong work ko dito sa Philippines or kung nag-work pa ako dito sa Philippines. So, sabi ko, I'm currently working as a freelancer. And sabi niya sa akin or tinanong niya sa akin, ano yung work ko before akong mag-freelance? So I told him I used to be a college instructor sa mga medtech and I'm a registered medtech. So tinignan niya lang yung PRC ID ko kung meron ba akong ID and tinatahan na yung passport ko. But just in case yung mga um, requirement or yung mga document na meron sa akin or that I had with me were the hotel booking confirmation, meron din akong dala or pin-repair pin na itinerary, booking ng activities namin doon and yung airport transfer. Also, BIR documents like my COR or the Certificate of Registration kasi wala pa akong ITR kasi kaka-register ko lang sa BIR as a freelancer. Um, I also had with me proofs na I have clients right now like contracts and invoice, mga ganun. Just in case may harapan ako sa immigration. But thankfully, hindi naman ako gaanong nahirapan. I think sa flight namin pa SG, Mayroon lang isang passenger na hindi nakaabot sa boarding kasi I think nasa immigration pa siya. Pero I also think na clear naman din siya kasi chismosa. <laughs> Sorry. Chismosa. My chismosa self discovered. So it took us about 3 hours from Manila to Singapore. And pagdating sa Changi Airport, dumiretso muna kami sa immigration. May mga nag naman. So madali naman yung process. You just need to show the officer your passport and the SG arrival card na kailangan nyo din i-fill up before kayong mag-arrive or before kayong dumating sa Singapore. Then, you're good to go once na ma-check nila yon and ma-verify nila. Okay na kayo nun. So, you can fill up the SG arrival card a few days before your flight para hindi ka ma-hassle and tuloy-tuloy yung process once na makarating kayo sa Changi Airport. Then, we went to get our check-in baggage. Nagpapalit ng cash and bumili na rin ako ng SIM card which has a data good for 30 days. For 30 SGT or around 1,200 pesos. Hinintay lang din namin yung airport transfer and dumiretso sa hotel. So, we stayed at the Sultan. It's a four-star hotel near Hatchie Lane. Sorry, no room there for today's so video. So, gabi na kami nakarating sa hotel. So, after namin maglapag ng gamit sa kwarto, nag-dinner na kami agad. And I just wanna share, walang bidet sa hotel. <laughs> Hindi ako sure if sa hotel lang namin, since 4-star siya and not 5-star, or kahit ba sa mga 5-star hotel din, wala pa. Pero, syempre, as a Pinoy, hindi tayo papayag na tissue lang. <laughs> so, syempre, gumawa tayo ng paraan. 
In SG, one of the best places to go is Sentosa. Most of our activities were located here, including the three activities I'll highlight in this video. One day is not enough to cover all the activities na pwedeng gawin dito. First stop is the SEA Aquarium, the home of 100,000 marine animals here in Sentosa. Medyo marami lang tao, pero hindi naman gaanong mainit. I think that's one thing I like about most tourist spots here na ka-aircon. Ang daming different species of aquatic animals most have seen for the first time. If you have a mermaid soul, this place is perfect for you. And unlike my last aquarium or ocean park experience, hindi malansa yung amoy dito. They have souvenir shops inside and before the exit to where you can buy pasalubong or something for your mermaid self. And also, if machempohan nyo, may mga staff na nagtitake ng photo which you can choose to get printed and take home with you for around 50 SGD or 2,000 pesos. We then went straight to Universal Studios. Sobrang lapit lang nito sa SEA Aquarium. And then we saw Sesame Street, my childhood. Unfortunately, ang haba ng pila sa mga attractions, so we only stayed here for a walk and to look around the place. If you want to get the best experience and you have the budget naman, you can get at the Express Pass so you don't have to line up kasi most attractions and nasa one or longer yung waiting time. In our case, we decided not to get the Express Pass na lang. Of course, hindi mawawala yung mga souvenir shop at dito. They have random USS souvenirs, the Minions, Hello Kitty, and a lot more, which if you have the money, mag enjoy kang mamili. By the way, food and drinks sa USS are a lot more expensive than the ones sold outside. And I have to remind you, mahal na rin talaga yung bilihin normally sa SG if you're going to convert it to PHP. So sa USS, mas mahal pa siya. Like yung malaking bottle of water normally cost 5 SGD sa 7-Eleven. Yung 5 SGD mo sa USS is yung maliit na bottle lang. Last but definitely not the least is the Van Gogh exhibit, which highlights not only the works but also the life of the famous Vincent of Van Gogh. There's also a short documentary in a nika play inside, and as a girl who loves art museums, sobrang nice magikot and just appreciate the artworks here. And for 5 SGD, you can get a separate VR experience pass. So, medyo nakakahilo siya, but I think I can say na ang ganda ng the Starry Night is a VR. There's this spot na pagpasok ko, nagbulat ako kasi ang daming nakahiga and they're just enjoying what they see. Like the other two activities, they also have a souvenir shop and a small cafe before the exit where you can buy things and just chill for a while. Pero puno yung cafe nung time na nandoon kami, so we just went back to the hotel after bumili ng souvenir. So these three tourist attractions are located at Resorts World Sentosa, kaya magkakalapit lang sila. So I suggest if you wanna go here, puntahan nyo to ng isang araw lang. Then, there are other attractions and activities pa sa Sentosa na napuntahan namin but not sa Resorts World which I will be talking about next time. That's it for today's video. I'll be talking about my Born Pink experience next so stay tuned. If you enjoyed watching this video, please give this a thumbs up and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can also follow me on social media. You can see the links below and see you again next week everyone. Bye! Ayinet, ayok yun na. Bakat ganto sa Pilipinas hindi naman ganto sa SG kahit may init.